All right, so now that we've got some of that stuff out of the way, let's jump right in and start talking about what makes a logo great. The first thing that we need to learn is good design elements. Let's take a look in relation to the logo that we're about to create. I'm going to try and keep this lesson relatively brief and only talk about the elements of good design that are most important in terms of building a logo. There are many, many elements of good design and I encourage you in your free time to explore them, check out the internet, maybe go to one of those giant buildings where they have books, which are those things that basically nobody reads anymore because we get all our information off the internet. But check it out because I'm going to try and focus here on just the elements that I think are most important in terms of logo design. The first thing I'm going to talk about is form following function or the three F's. The second thing is shapes and space. And finally, I'm going to end it out with lines and flow. Now I've kind of combined a bunch of different elements here because I want to squeeze as much good information into this as possible without making it two hours long so that we can get on to the next lesson and eventually get straight into this logo design. Before we get started, I want to read you a quote regarding form follows function by architect Lewis Sullivan, who is credited with coining the phrase. Now he said, It is the pervading law of all things organic and inorganic, of all things physical and metaphysical, of all things human and all things superhuman, of all true manifestations of the head, of the heart, of the soul, that life is recognizable in its expression, that form ever follows function. This is the law. Sullivan believed the designs of his buildings should be determined by their purpose, not by historical precedent. Now at the time, modern buildings were growing in height, so custom dictated that the walls bear the bulk of the weight of the building. This is how it had always been done. But as these new skyscrapers grew taller, this was not a feasible solution any longer if you wanted your building to remain standing. Same thing is true with design. If your intention is to attract children, then bright colors would be the order of the day. As a child's eyes are more attuned to them, this is why cartoons tend to use solid, bright colors. The same thing as I already said, if you build a car, you don't build your wheels out of cubes, you make them cylinders. In logo design, the same thing is true. Your goal is not only to construct a form that is easily representative of your band, but it's also going to remain in people's minds long after they've seen it. So let's take a look real quickly here at the how to promote your band logo in terms of form following function. I wanted this entire logo to have a very do-it-yourself feel because that's the gist of this entire series. When you're first starting out with a band, you don't have a ton of money to go hiring a graphic designer to do all your work for you and making sure that everything is branded. So it's going to be very do-it-yourself. In this case, this is why I'm using the spray-painted edges here. I'm using the stencil font. Uh, likely, you can find a number of stencil fonts down at your, your local hardware store. And finally, I've also chosen the image here of a guy smashing a flying V guitar. And the reason that I've chosen that is because this is associated greatly with rock music, with punk music specifically. They smash a lot of guitars, the idea being that they're rebelling against the institution, that they're very emotional, they're angry, and here's how they show it. Doesn't matter, they get caught up in the music in the moment. They own it, and, and they never let it go. You probably wouldn't want to use this if you were opening a bank. This would not be California Savings Bank, a bank you don't want to feel kind of haphazardly thrown together, and you definitely don't want them smashing expensive investments like a flying V guitar. So let's talk about basic shapes and space. Switching over to a second how to promote your band style logo here. Also, you wouldn't want to use this one for a bank unless you were saying that you were extremely secure, in which case you'd probably use something different in the font. So let's take this real quick. Let's move this over a little bit. And we'll come down here, do a little control T action. Okay, so here the space works because you have an abundance of white space here and then you have the dark space here. There's a balance between the two and it feels grounded because your eyes start out here and, and the reason that I turned this gun on its end like this is because you can see that this we're trying to represent us being in control. And control, being stable, the heavier side is on the bottom and that represents stability. We have control over this situation, so that's why I put the gun on its side. So let me just highlight this, and let's see what kind of out of control would look like. Out of control would be a little more like this, a bit more chaotic. Deselect. Out of control would be more chaotic. Things would be at an angle. If we look at how this balances now, you're still entering this image from the left-hand side, and now we're aiming up 
But if you look at the balance of the overall shape, now it's an inverted triangle, which could fall over at any second. So keep in mind these shapes as you're building things. This is also why the designers chose circles in a lot of the logos that we've already looked at. And that is because circles, a circle will tend to send your eye straight to the center and keep it in the center. And that's why they've chosen it because usually, because usually you'll just look at whatever's there in the center. Typically it'll be the name of the band or whatever logo or whatever icon they have that represents them. And your eyes won't move away from that particular spot. If you then put this on a shirt somewhere, your eyes are going to be immediately drawn to that because you have this giant empty space and the only filled in area is the logo itself. Lines and flow. It's important to try and develop different skills when you're building a logo and when you're doing any sort of graphic design in general because different people see things in different ways. I was talking to Justin Z, who's doing the fantastic How to Design a Movie Poster series, and we were talking about symmetry. Now, something like the Nine Inch Nails logo is completely symmetrical. If you draw a line down the center, you get the same image on both sides. That's easily recognizable. Something like the, the Rolling Stones logo, there's really no symmetry unless you're talking about depth. But if you're just looking at this logo itself, the right side and the left side, once we draw our line, not even close to being the same. Now, the context that we were talking about specifically was the Silence of the Lambs poster that he was talking about. This is one of Justin's favorite posters. And he said that he loves the symmetry of this. Now, Justin is primarily a filmmaker, so when he sees this, he sees the two eyes and the, the face here. And then, for all intents and purposes, this moth is perfectly symmetrical on both sides. All the way down here, now even though this is different words, uh, you know, you have your little red line here and the credits. It's basically symmetrical. When we were discussing this, I shared with him one of the ways that I see this poster in which it's not symmetrical at all. Here's the way I presented this to him to take a look at. Drunk down here to Gaussian Blur. And if I can find it on my screen here. All right, ready for this? I'm gonna turn preview on. Perfectly symmetrical, right? We got the eyes, we get the mouth. Okay, we got a little bit of dark here. Watch this. Where's the symmetry? If I hit okay, and I draw a line down the center, that is not the same image. In fact, we'll even go this far. I'll copy this image. And then I'll drag it over. Not remotely the same. Even if I were to invert it, flip it horizontal like we saw the Nine Inch Nails logo, still not the same. Okay, you can see that forms kind of a down arrow at this point. So you have to be aware of the color and the shapes and forms that you're creating here, as well as the lines. And by lines, I don't mean physical lines that you draw, but I mean right here. Right here, there's a line created across the face here where the white and the black intersect. There's also another line here. And when we unblur this in a couple seconds, there's a line right across the eyes, and there's another line across the text here. So let me show you how I get these lines. The first one we talked about is where the, the light and dark intersect. One of the first things that humans are trained to see is faces. When we look at the eyes, in Western society, we're taught to read from left to right. And as a result, most everything we look at is from left to right. So when I'm looking at these eyes, my vision goes from left to right. Once I get over to here, I start, my eyes start following the line that's created between the light and dark areas. So my vision goes in this direction. Once my eyes get to the bottom here, there's another design element as the white and dark areas uh, wash each other out that rises to prominence. And that is the words here, the silence of the lambs. Again, in Western society, we read from right to left. Excuse me, we read from left to right. So if I come back here, grab shape one. So now I'm looking this way. So the flow of this particular image is a Z pattern. Now this is one of the most basic patterns that you're gonna see in movie posters, in magazine covers, in articles. Uh, a lot of advertisement gives you the Z because this is how we in advertising can cover the most information. We can put information here, we can put further information here. We wanted you to see the moth because that plays an integral part of the movie. The nose here, it doesn't really matter. And then down here is the title and all of the stars and everything else we want you to read. So 
Z pattern is really prominent. Try and look for it. How does this relate to logo design? Let's look at the Rolling Stones logo. As Westerners, we're trained to look from left to right. Once you get over here to the teeth, you follow these further lines here, both a contour line on the outside and this black line right here, and your vision is naturally pulled over the tongue. Since the tongue further curves down to the, to the right, and there's also, if we blur this out a little bit, you can see that there's a line formed right here by the bottom of the lip and the bottom of this white highlight line and to a degree where our eyes were naturally going. So now we have this last element that takes our eyes back across this way. So you can see even the Rolling Stones logo, which again, as I said, was created after they were already a band, follows this typical Z pattern. So these are the main graphic design elements that relate to creating your logo. And that's all for this lesson. Please remember to comment. Hey everyone, one quick note before you go. This video that you just watched is part of a larger course on how to promote your band. So if you liked what you saw, or if you're just ready for the next step, then click the link right here in the description, and that will take you to the course page overview where you'll see every lesson in the series, and you can pick and choose which ones you want to watch. Please remember to comment, rate, and subscribe below, and if you have any questions, send them to requests at mahalo.com. Thanks for watching.